Hi, welcome back. Well, today we're going to be talking about camera angles. Camera angle is the camera's relationship to the subject vertically. There are three basic camera angles that you can use. I mean, there, you can go in between these. These are the three basic ones that people use. Um, low angle, high angle, and eye level. And let's get into what they mean. Low angle basically means it shows dominance. Now, there are rules to these, okay? Sure, n normally if we're, we're looking up at somebody, that means they're stronger than we are. They're more powerful than we are. But in some situations, if you have a roof over their head or a ceiling, and you have that ceiling built more closer to their head, then it's going to look like the ceiling's coming down on them, and it might show inferiority. But nine times out of ten, we're going to show dominance. And I said that because I'll show you later on how um, Sidney Lumet, when he directed 12 Angry Men, actually used that concept to show restriction that these 12, these 12 jurors were actually had the weight of the world on their shoulders, so he shot them at a lower angle at the end of the movie when they had to make a big decision. So these are rules, but they can be broken. Okay, The high angle shows inferiority. This was taken from Psycho, um, one of the classic scenes out of that movie. Um, as we're looking down on somebody to see that we have maybe disdain, we feel that we're empowered over them, so you can show that and, and again it's very simple this is not it's it's not rocket science but um, to be able to use it and there are some cases where you might look down and if you're looking through your lens and you come up with something that works that's fine but normally when you show a high angle it shows inferiority and uh, to a, uh, a character um, this is a scene from the graduate where Benjamin who is the main um, character in this what he's doing is those are his family, his friends, his family friends, but it's his parents' friends. And he doesn't want to become them. So he's up in his room and he's actually looking down on them. I mean, he's actually looking down on them. And Mike Nichols shows that by doing an over-the-shoulder shot um, to show that he, he, he has kind of disdain for him. Um, and he shows that throughout the movie, too. Uh, if you have a chance, pick it up and watch it. It's a phenomenal film. Um, eye level is what we consider neutrality. Milos Forman was a great director who directed one of my favorite films called One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. He always said, if nothing's happening, and if it's a normal day, start the film out shooting it neutral. Shoot it straight on. And when something happens, let, it, let the, 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 the drama and the characterization dictate what you do with your camera. Don't you dictate to it because sometimes you'll go against it and, 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 and it won't work okay so that's something I always keep in mind um, again if it's a normal day which a lot of scripts start out just a normal day um, you know you can use that as a starting point and shooting everybody at eye level but then when something happens now you have room to move you can you can you can compose your your um, your uh, your music or what we call our shots and our scenes, um, you can compose them uh, and have a baseline for it. Uh, let's talk about lenses too. Um, just real basic, a converging lens or what we call um, a, a convex lens um, is actually usually a wider lens. Uh, a concave lens, which is diverging, diverging lens, is actually more of a um, telephoto lens. Um, so I just want to keep that in mind. A wide-angle lens um, elongates space. It shows a lot more, um, more degree radius than you would see with a telephoto because that compresses space. Usually a 5 millimeter to a, five millimeter to a 35 millimeter will actually show um, if there's more depth of field and, and it has more area that we see, but it's distorted. As you notice, the horizon lines will bend um, and it doesn't quite look normal, um, but it, it can be used with great effect. Um, you see movies like 2001 Space Odyssey use it a lot. Kubrick uses a lot of them. Um, so, you know, if you want to pick those up, that's great, too. Um, this was from The Graduate, also, when he was walking down the hall. What happens um, when you're shooting at the wide angle, also, you have more depth of field. So he's in focus that whole time when he's walking down the hall. Um, Look at this. 
this is a, a wide angle lens used from Requiem for a Dream, and it was used in, in, in um, Ellen Burstyn's close up in the doctor's office. And if you notice, the doors are, are, are curved, all the horizon lines are curved, every hard line that's in, the, in, that, in that room is curved. And look at her face. Most actresses would not be one to be filmed with a wide angle lens because it puts about 50 extra pounds on you. Like it makes things look bigger. And so, but because of her character and what she was going through at the time, that really helped with her character and her being one of the greatest actresses in the world. Uh, didn't mind that because she cares about the character and the story more. So that's what wide angle lenses do. Telephoto lenses compress distances. Um, you can get telephoto lenses up to a thousand millimeters, uh, but normally we want to save from 60 uh, to 500. Rarely do you see a 500. But this, what it does is it, it actually, it's shallow depth of field, but it, it puts the actress or actor in focus and blurs out the background. And sometimes that's good because if you just want the audience to say, hey, I want you to look in here, I don't want you looking anywhere else. Um, it, it really packs a punch. And it, and it really shows that you can actually put somebody, um, isolate them by being able to throw the background out of focus, almost putting them in jail or you know of their own fears or their own surroundings so and sometimes it's just there to hide bad set design too I've seen that happen before and that usually sell, um, separates uh, uh, I see a lot of student films and, and a lot of student films people don't want to pull focus because they're afraid they'll screw up the focus so why not just put a 50 millimeter on that will show everything in focus and you have enough you have enough um, depth of field that you don't have to pull focus so you don't have to worry about screwing it up but what what makes film what separates it from you know before episodic television and you know with, with sitcoms um, everything's in focus everything's lit real you know it's a real high key so you know you don't you want to have a dramatic feel and that's what a telephoto does so any chance you can use them and it fits if it fits use it um, that's what a long lens looks like. That's pretty much telephoto. They're more expensive. Um, they can also be primes. That doesn't mean that they're variable lenses. A lot of people make that mistake. Um, a normal view is 50 millimeters, and uh, that actually shows how we see as humans. So, like what Milos Forman said, you know, if you want to shoot at eye level because, because it's a normal day, then why not shoot with a 50 millimeter? And then when something happens, start changing the lenses as the characters change, as the situation changes. High angle, low angle, um, eye level, 50 millimeter. How about a medium shot to go along with that? So if we use those three aspects, we can show a pretty uh, boring or humdrum, humdrum, insipid life of somebody for a little bit. And then when things start happening, you can really um, express it with using... Um, you know different lenses and angles and shot sizes okay this is a camera angle scene study from the movie 12 angry men directed by Sidney Lumet um, the, the, the thing about this film is it was shot in one room I mean we had there's about one minute of film that was shot outside at the end but he had a lot of restrictions it's hard to make something interesting um, by shooting in one room and how he did that was he assembled some of the greatest actors in the world um, including Henry Fonda and Lee J. Cobb and put them in the room and plus he knew technically he had to do something different so ba his basic what he started out was was let's start out with um, a high angle we'll start out at a high angle um, show the whole room use long well, I mean let's use wide lenses because the jurors are coming in and they think that they're basically gonna charge this kid for murder because they, they think he's guilty automatically. So the camera was high and showing everybody and people were, you know, saying, okay, we know what's going to happen. Let's get this over with. But then in the middle of it, Henry Fonda actually says, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need to talk this out. We can't do this in just two minutes. So let's think about what's going on. Let's sit here and think for a while. So when he started delivering factual evidence, the camera went to eye level, okay? Because we didn't want to be high or low at that time. 
Um, we wanted to basically because we were showing the facts. Um, then he went to a like 50 millimeter lens to show everything in focus, everything is fine. Um, again, this is how we see as humans. And then at the end, uh, when they were trying to make this decision, he lowered the camera to show the, 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 the ceiling and he went to a little bit longer lenses. Not much. It wasn't, it wasn't enough that you can really tell, but he wanted to show that the roof was coming down on their heads, uh, you know, figuratively, that, that they had the weight of the world on them. So he basically went in three acts. And, and in those three acts, he went low angle, I mean high angle, um, eye level, and then low angle. So let's take a look at that right now. Here's the beginning of it. As you can see, it's a static shot. It's at a high angle. We can see where the jurors are going to be. We can see everything that's going to happen. This is the opening credits. Again, it's cinematically, it's not really saying much now. But he also doesn't cut at the beginning either, if you think about editing. At, the, at this opening, people just start walking in, and the camera is it's in a master shot for quite a while. And then... You know, he starts cutting more in the film as the drama keeps going, as they realize, oh boy, we're going to have to start making decisions. And when people will start arguing with each other, then he starts to cut. So this is the opening of it. As you can see, it's a high angle with a wider lens so we can see everybody. And then as we get to the second act, we're at eye level now. And he says, wait a minute here. Now we're at a 50 millimeter lens. It's not as wide as it was, as you can see here. Now he's starting to get tighter too on the faces. What he's asking him, what he's asking everybody right now is, I want to sit and talk about it. Okay? I want to show the facts. So Sidney Lumet keeps it like this. Okay? He keeps it until the end. Now here's here's act three. As you see, we're slowly tilted up. We're kind of at a lower angle. Okay, and at some point you're gonna see the roof. I don't know if we'll keep it going. But the camera's just a little bit below eye level, as you can see, because now the the the, the pain is setting in, of, 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 and it's getting darker out, and the rain is falling even harder. See all the things that are going on behind there? So that's that's how simple it can be, but yet what he used technically to show this, and I think it was brilliant. I think uh, Lumet was great, and if you pick this movie up too, you'd you'd really enjoy it. It's one of the most one of the most I think one of the one of the one of the best. Well, you know, we have the Graduate, of course. I said that already, but these are some old classics that you you might want to look at because it was very good. And he also wrote a really good book called um, Making Movies by Sidney Lumet. If you want to pick it up, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop it here, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you on the next podcast. Thanks.